Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Caleb Jakes and I'm a grizzly bear safari guide in Alaska. And today I have a bunch of awesome videos compiled for you guys and we're gonna talk about all of them. Let's get right into it. This is a bear encounter we had this last year in Hallow Bay. Now this is a huge dominant bear. And when I say dominant, what I mean is the animal is willing to use violence or force to achieve satisfaction. Now that kind of sounds like a strange way to verb that and that's because the way we talk about animal behavior largely as a society is just absolutely wrong and when you have to talk about it correctly you have to talk about it like people uh, like bf skinner did you know one of my favorite books of all time is the behavior of organisms by bf skinner in which he talks about practical and operant conditioning classical conditioning and, and all of that kind of stuff and how valuable it is when dealing with animals. I mean, this is a guy that trained pigeons to guide missiles. So he's a guy you should be probably listening to when it comes to animal behavior. And he's who I've learned the most from, definitely. But uh, this encounter right here, I know for a fact this bear is not running off. There's no amount of hay bears and arms waving in the air that's going to run this bear off. And at the end of the day, when you run into a bear like this, you only have one choice. And that is to back up. You know, it doesn't matter what you're conditioning the animal to do at this Step point because again. safety comes first. When you can condition bears to leave people alone, that's absolutely what you should do. When you can Keep condition bears out. to view people as neutral entities, that is exactly what you should do. But when you can't, you have to settle for the alternative, which is save yourself, save your group, and back up. And that guide right there was doing everything right. I only walked over He's to alive. assist him, and I still let him control his group. I still respected his authority over his group. He's one of our, our best guides, yeah, and side, honestly, man. someone that I love and respect a lot, and I didn't want to see anything bad happen to. And during this encounter, I'm laughing and kind of joking around with him because I can hear the stress in his voice. And I know how stressful these encounters can be. I've been doing this since I was nine years old, exploring Alaska with my dad. My first bear encounter, I was nine. And we had a bear steal a fish from the fishing pole. And it was very, very tense. And so, you know, guiding since I've been 14 years old, I was trained at 12. I, I have tons of experience and I've experienced the stress that he's feeling. And, and this being a second year, I wanted to really reinforce that he was doing everything right because he's a great guide and he was doing everything right. And his group wasn't really paying attention to him. You can hear him being like, guys, get your shit, pack it up, back up. And that's absolutely what you need to do in these situations. People oftentimes make these situations way more dangerous because they panic and or because they're not paying attention and yeah, or right because there, so they are stressed and making bad decisions oh, and so the reason i'm laughing is to calm everyone down bring that stress level down allow good decision making to reoccur which is exactly what happens the next situation that we're going to talk about is this and i'm not going to pause the video so you guys are going to hear me talk fairly quick this bear approaches we've got bears behind us and to the left of us and i can't back up into those so i decide to deal with the young sub-adult first um, and hopefully run this off. Now my bear spray, uh, if you guys have read the description, is with the guide to my left, who this was his first day in the field, so he's not really thinking like a guide yet, he's thinking more like a tourist. So I take my gun out, just in case the bear's too close, right? The bear's way too close. And the bear continues that approach, continues that curiosity. And I'm not at the point where I need to run it away because nothing bad's happening yet. And right here, right here is when I should have ran it away. It bluff charges us. One more step after that, and I would have had to fire the weapon. Um, didn't, though, you know, because I didn't need to. And then I re-engage the bear, and the bear re-engages with me. And now there's a dominance dispute happening. And what I want everyone to do now is get behind me and put their arms up, make themselves look big. And you're going to see the exact effect this has on the bear in just a second. The bear is now more hesitant to engage. And so I decide, let's push back and make sure this bear learns people are not to be trifled with. You're not to come around and, and nose around people. Because this is when it matters that you condition the animals that you're dealing with in their surroundings to avoid people and to avoid pushing people around because it's not acceptable behavior. And in the long run, if you allow bears like this to continue that behavior, not only well, it hurts someone else in the field who's not as experienced as you, but it'll also get the bear killed. And so wanting to avoid all of that, I run the bear off. And I, I stand by that 100%. I've gotten thousands of negative comments on this video, and I just don't give a shit because I know in my heart and my soul that I did exactly what was right. Now, obviously, those encounters are not encounters I would like to repeat, but they're encounters that do happen because wildlife is essentially... Wildlife is not always perfectly predictable. These bears, however, are very, very predictable. And so it's very easy for us as guides to read them and to respond to that body language. This is the type of encounter I want to have, where the bears are very neutral, they're not looking at us. They they know we're there. 
There's no way they don't know we're there. Bears are incredibly aware creatures. They know that we're there. But these guys just don't care because we're neutral. We're not doing anything. We're not involved with them. We're not in any type of confrontation. They're just grazing and we're just watching. You know, that's perfect. And unfortunately, YouTube is not going to really push videos like that because they're boring to watch and no one really wants to watch. And so that's why I'm talking over this and hoping that some people out there listening and maybe learning how to handle bear encounters from someone who is an expert. And I hate using that term, but like, honestly, with 10,000 hours in the field and, and see, that's the hard part is like, what makes you an expert? Is it experience? Is it success? What makes you an expert? Because by experience and, and success, I am an expert. But by having a college degree in bear behavior, like that's not a thing that exists. You can't do that. And so to call myself an expert, it, it feels a little egocentric. And so I, I kind of tend to stay away from that. And so instead I call myself a professional grizzly bear safari guide because that's a very accurate term that no one can really argue with. You know, that is what I get paid to do all summer long. And so you guys decide whether I'm an expert. I don't, I don't care. Argue about it in the comments. Do whatever you want this bear encounter right here. Now I'm not going to out this guy, but the guy in gray is a world renowned photographer, has published hundreds of books. And he is someone that I call uncle out of, out of not only respect, but out of like closeness and relationship, you know, because he's someone that actually trained me at 12 years old, took me under his wing and helped me mature into the guide that I am today. And I, I cannot thank him enough for that. And I see him every year and he is someone I admire and respect and love and honest to God, he is one of the most experienced wildlife photographers and experts in the world. And so when he says something's okay, it's okay for him. That doesn't mean it's okay for you guys out there to go do it because you guys don't have the experience. He's traveled all around the world. He's had thousands of encounters with gorillas, bears, rhinos, elephants, giraffes, lions, leopards, jaguars, any animal you can name. Not only has he photographed it, but he's done the best at photographing it over the last 55 years of his career. So there just can't be any hate levied at this guy. And this is a, an encounter where a lot of people are tempted to say things like, ah, that's a mother grizzly bear. Mother grizzly bears are notoriously bad. They're notoriously ill-tempered and whatever. And here's just the facts. On this river, mother bears are way easier to deal with than the old big boars. And uh, those male bears, those boars, are, are way more dangerous than the moms on this river. And that's because of the type of conditioning, which the park service calls habituation, that has taken place. Habituation is just a fancy term for operant conditioning taking place over a long period of time, but it's still just operant conditioning. And uh, I don't know why the park service doesn't just accept that and, and change the terminology. It's, it's probably because it makes it look worse or because they want to preserve their image of like uniqueness. But in reality, this the same type of habituation could occur in Yellowstone. The only, the only difference is uh, the amount of food that plays a huge, huge part in this. There are millions of salmon that run up this river every single year. Not thousands, millions, guys. And so because of that extreme amount of food, you get bears that have no reason to exhibit predatory behavior on people. And the close proximity that they share with one another is no different than the close proximity they're sharing to people. And when they view people the same way they view bears as, you know, potential risks to themselves, they, they do not want to engage with it because there's no value in engaging with potential risk when there's food elsewhere with zero risk. So that's one of those things you really got to consider. And yeah, look at this. I mean, this is an incredible encounter. People are photographing these bears. There's a mom and three cubs. Very, very relaxed behavior. I mean, just look at that. This is the type of encounter I want to have with bears every single time. Now, it's not always possible. And you'll never see me uh, engage with, in a territory dispute or in a dominance dispute with a mom and cubs. And it's because in this area, moms are so much easier to deal with than any other type of bear. Again, just because of the type of habituation that has taken place over the last 40 to 60 years on these rivers. So yeah, and then moving on, you know, here's another, here's another video of, of me out with a group of people. And this is a much more understandable encounter for most people because the bear is so far away or looks so far away. Now the phone camera does make it look farther than it is. So here's another one. These guys are photographing a mom and three cubs. And what is the mom doing? Looking down into the river, waiting for fish. She'll actually, she won't jump from that spot, but she's, uh, she's fishing. So she's resting right now. And then she'll continue fishing, you know, later on when uh, she sees a, a pool or a pod of salmon come up, you know, and they come up in, in, a, in rows of like a dozen or 20 or 30 salmon. And, and during those 
those pushes where the, the fish are going upstream and they're moving quite slowly, that's when the moth will strike. So great encounter here with another expert wildlife photographer. You guys will know him. I'll out him because he has a YouTube on his own. His name's Rob Fuller. Sorry, guys. This is another great encounter. I don't always know exactly what my guides are seeing when I'm, you know, kind of seeing a bigger picture than they are and when they're down in, in brush like this. So it's always important as the head guide in our operation to make sure that the guides are aware of potential dangers. And right here I see rustling in the bushes behind them. That isn't just from the wind, it's also from a bear back there. And so I make the call to whistle down to my guide and be like, hey buddy, there is a there's a bear right there. And he knew this already. He's eating a bag of Cheetos or something, which is fine. You, you guys in the comments are gonna be like, ah, you shouldn't be eating around the bears. Shut up. Like I do it all the time. I do it literally every single day. I'll eat within 50, 60 yards of a bear and it's no problem because we're experts and we've been doing this for so long. We know when we can do something and when we can't, you know? And so uh, I, I point this bear out to him and what does he do immediately? He says, oh, I'm too close to the bear to be eating. Puts his food away. See him look at me. Immediately points so that the guest can get on the opposite side of him. So he's engaging with the danger instead of the guest. That's perfect. And takes off his bag, puts his food away. That's exactly what I want to see, guys. If you go with an operation and something like this happens and this isn't their response, don't go back with that operation. It's that simple because they aren't skilled enough to handle these type of situations. So I really value it when my guides listen and, and take the precautions that they need to be taking in order to have these safe encounters. This was awesome. Another great encounter. I keep saying that and that's because 99.9% .9 of what we have is awesome, great encounters like this. And uh, it's those are not the encounters that go viral on YouTube. So it takes me sitting down for 15 minutes and talking to you guys about these encounters to really uh, bring them to the limelight. And, you know, this video isn't going to get thousands of views. It's not. It's going to get a few hundred views despite the fact that I have 85,000 followers. And that's because of the videos that have gone viral. You know, people do come to our channel to see viral content with, with bear encounters that are potentially dangerous. But here's the thing. I don't care. I don't care what people come to the channel for. I want to shoot good content and I want to make sure people are being educated and are being safe out with the bears. That is so much more important than anything else to me is that people are safe out with these bears and having safe encounters and they have real information because there's so much BS out there. Like even people that are famous like Joe Rogan, they don't know what they're talking about when it comes to these encounters. Joe Rogan is, is predominantly affiliated with individuals that are guiding in Montana, Wyoming, Yellowstone, um, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, those areas that do have populations of grizzly bears, but that are small populations of grizzly bears. And so as a result, he's not affiliated with people like us, which are guiding these safaris every single day, out with bears every single day, and doing this stuff in coastal Alaska. So those are very different bears, very different experiences, very different demographics. And uh, as a result, he's limited on what his knowledge is, but he's the guy most people listen to. And unfortunately, like everybody else, he has his gaps in knowledge. Anyway, guys, Thanks for watching. If you guys stay tuned for the entire video, you are super valuable to me and I really appreciate you. Love you guys. Please have safe travels out there. And remember, there's a lot of BS out there online, so you gotta sift through it to find good information like what I'm trying to give you guys here. Until next time, peace. Well guys, I think that's a mom and cub right there. And I think they don't mind us.